After quitting Scratch, I challenged myself to create something impossible, making my first ever multiplayer dream game, and trust me, it was not easy. Multiplayer games are way more complex than anything I've ever built in Scratch. You have to deal with networking, latency, servers, voice chat, it's a whole different beast. Scratch simply doesn't have the tools to build multiplayer games like this. Scratch does have a few multiplayer games, but they do come with limitations. In Scratch, the only reason you're able to make multiplayer is because of the cloud variables. The cloud variables store values in real time across the project. Some genius found out a way to sync the variables in between players and voila, multiplayer inside of Scratch. The cloud variables can only store numbers though. The other thing is you can only have 10 cloud variables in each project. So that limits the number of players in each game from 10 to 20 players. And if you're really, really smart, you can compress the data and have 50 players. But having a high IQ on Scratch is pretty much impossible. There's also a lot of lag, one tenth of a second, which is around 100 ping. So that pretty much eliminates the possibility of having a fast paced multiplayer game, like an FPS or a shooter game. When I first started work on my dream game, I had no idea what I was getting into. In Scratch, the only thing I had to worry about was the clone limit. But now I had to think about server side programming, networking, servers, and much, much more. So I just decided to cross that bridge when I got there and made a new project inside of Unity. The first problem, I needed multiplayer. In Unity, there is a whole bunch of plugins I could use to do this. Unit for game objects, Photon Pun, which sucks booty, and Fishnet, which I found about just recently. You see, my dream game, After Blast, is nothing new. Way back in 2019, I created the first version of After Blast. Since it was my first run-in with multiplayer, I spent a few months working on After Blast 1.0, which ended up being a horrible piece of work, now that I look back at it. My game was a third-person shooter, just like Fortnite, but it didn't have building because I was too lazy to code it in. Unfortunately, after a couple months of work on After Blast 1.0, I eventually gave up because it only supported two players in a single game. And then, a few months later, I was hit by another boost of motivation when I saw the Fortnite Travis Scott concert. I immediately started to work on After Blast 2.0, which hopefully would be a lot better than the last one. I don't have any footage of After Blast 2.0 because my old hard drive got corrupted. But even if I did have the game files, the Photon server doesn't work anymore because Photon sucks. Never use it. Before even completing After Blast 2.0, I quit. Why does this always happen to me? The hardest thing about making a multiplayer game is, of course, the multiplayer. You see, there are different kinds of multiplayer. A local multiplayer game is where there are only two or more players on a single computer or console. Think of Mario Party, Super Smash Bros, Overcooked, or Mortal Kombat. A LAN multiplayer game is where you have multiple computers in the same room, connected to a single server. Most tournaments, like the Fortnite World Cup, are a LAN tournament, where the players have to travel to the server location. And the last kind of multiplayer game is an MMO, a massively multiplayer online. It's basically any kind of game that has servers around the world. Think of Call of Duty, Fortnite, Apex Legends, and more. An MMO is the hardest kind of game to make. So, of course, I'm gonna be making it. The first problem was movement. Now, it might seem simple. Just code it in so every time you press the right arrow, you move to the right. That might work in Scratch but not Unity. There is something called server authoritative movement. It forces the server to have control over the player's movement. It was so complicated to code. It added almost another month onto development time. Now, I didn't know it at first, but because I had said, I'll crash that bridge when I come to it, I had just dove down a huge rabbit hole. Imagine in Scratch if you were trying to make a multiplayer game. If you let each player's computer decide where they were, one player could speed up their character by changing the movement speed variable. But with server authoritative movement, each player can request to move, but the server will check speed and make sure everyone plays by the same rules. Honestly, for a small indie game like mine, it was way overkill. The only games that I know have server authoritative movement are AAA games that have millions of dollars of budget and hundreds of employees. But I decided to try it out anyways, because what's the worst that could happen? It wasn't working for me at all. There were so many bugs and issues that shouldn't have been there, like this annoying movement jitter bug. When I added sliding to the movement, the player jumps around all over the place, and it's still like that. If I hadn't added server authoritative movement, it would have taken an hour to fix these problems. But testing out a multiplayer game is super hard. If you change one small line of code, it takes 10 minutes just to see if the code you changed fixed the bug or not. Unlike in Scratch, where you can just reload the page, in Unity, you have to build the entire game, which is what takes up most of the time. Eventually, I got the server authoritative movement to work. Well, that only took a couple months. Next, I had to tackle the next challenge, the player model. In previous versions of After Blast, you could see that it had a very, very crude player model. I was gonna do that for After Blast 3.0, but I decided not to because I would have to rig it and animate it. 
which would take forever. Instead, I just stole the default Mixel model and used their animations. The next problem I ran into was servers. Man, if I had a cent for every hiccup I ran into, I'd be a millionaire by now. Speaking of millionaires, you can look like one too with my limited edition Jackson Academy Exo Soccer hoodie. This hoodie was designed for those who demand style and comfort while debugging endless issues. And trust me, it's authentic with 100% cotton sleeves to keep you comfortable even when your game isn't. Grab yours now at jacksonacademy.shop before it's gone. In a multiplayer game, a server is a central computer that manages the entire game, letting players from different locations connect to a single game. Everything that you see online is hosted by a server. Even Scratch has a server. That's why sometimes you'll see a message like, oops, the Scratch server is scratching its head. Making a server is no easy task. You need an expensive computer to run a game build on and deal with all the issues that come along with it, bandwidth and data, costs and uptime. So clearly, I was not going to make my own server. I was going to have to use another server system like Amazon's AWS or Unity's own built-in servers. Unity's built-in servers, Unity Relay, only has about 10 locations in the entire world. So if you aren't close to their server locations, you would be getting really high ping. I tested out Unity servers and I was actually surprised how bad they were. I was getting 100 to 200 ping in a game and there was only one player. Unity Relay clearly wasn't going to work. AWS was my next best bet because they have way more locations. The only downside was that they charge you for how much servers you use. Like, look at this. I was just testing out Afterblast for a couple hours and I was charged $3 just for testing. Servers are going to be a pain, but if I can charge a couple dollars for Afterblast on Steam, hopefully I shouldn't go homeless. So after a couple of weeks of pulling my hair out trying to get Amazon servers to work, I eventually got it. Yippee! Now, my game was getting around 10 to 20 ping, so it was definitely worth it in the end. So, is my dream game done? Is Afterblast finally gonna be a thing? Nope. The next problem I ran into was shooting. Like, bro, how many issues am I gonna have? Like, with movement, I thought it was gonna be a pretty simple task of just shooting a bullet every time the player clicked. That's what I would do in Scratch. If mouse down, create clone of bullet. But no, it is not that simple. In a multiplayer game, every player's view is different from the other. From your screen, if you shoot a bullet, it might hit an enemy. But on the enemy's point of view, they just crouched out of the way. If the shooting player damaged the enemy, the enemy would get hit even if they aren't in the path of the bullet. To fix this, I needed to code in something called server authoritative shooting. It's basically the same thing as server authoritative movement where the server has control over who does what. When you shoot, the player checks to see if you hit the enemy you were aiming at. And if you didn't, the shot doesn't damage the enemy. This is why sometimes in FPS games, you hit blank shots. Blank shots happen when you hit the enemy on your screen, but the server decides not to count the shot, either because the enemy wasn't in the path of the bullet or you missed. What happened in typical gamer's case is that the other player had really high ping, so the player's position on the server wasn't updated with typical gamer's view. Honestly, it could not be me. In this clip, you can see what Afterblast was like before I put in server authoritative shooting. In this version, when you shot, the bullet would damage the player regardless of what the server said, which made it so easy to hit players from behind cover. It also looked super laggy because I was using Unity's relay servers, which sucked. And here is a clip after I coded in the server authoritative shooting. Hopefully, it should look and feel a lot more responsive. So now, after years of hard work, I had finally gotten the basics of Afterblast down packed. Movement is smooth and server authoritative. The game is almost hacker proof and the server is now running online with AWS. Now it was time to put the Steam page up. I made a quick logo, some art assets and paid $100 to put the store page online. So that's it. If you want to have a chance to beta test the game, be sure to wishlist the game on Steam and subscribe. I'm still currently working on the game and I need suggestions. So scroll down to the comments and leave one.